Salut à toutes et à tous et bienvenue dans Story Series saison 2, épisode 27. Cette semaine, on déroule le tapis rouge à l'une des showrunneuses les plus puissantes d'Hollywood et présidente du jury de la dernière édition de Série Mania, Martin Oxon. <rire> Celle qui a commencé sa carrière de scénariste sur Buffy contre les vampires s'emploie depuis 20 ans à changer la représentation souvent trop stéréotypée des héroïnes. That's not fair. Yeah, probably not. But newsflash, life's not fair. Des productrices assoiffées de pouvoir de Unreal, au clan de vengeresse de Dietland ou aux femmes en colère de Sharp Objects, Martin Oxon a toujours évité les clichés pour imposer la justesse et raconter enfin la vie de toutes les femmes. Autant vous dire qu'on la remercie. So Marty, from Buffy to Sharp Objects, you've given us like the one of the best female characters we've ever seen. And before we talk about the way you're right, I wonder if you feel you have a responsibility toward us, that we are mm. expecting something from you as women <laughs> and from your characters. Yeah, I think that at our best, our work creates empathy in other people. So I definitely, you know, strive for that. Showing the But I can't invisible. feel the pressure, because if I think that way... You don't way, want to. Well, if I think that way, then it, it, it affects the work. Yeah. You know, it has to come from some place that is doesn't live in the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Camille wrote a new article. Everyone's talking about it. What's that? She says it's either John Keane or Bob Nash who killed those girls. No, I just said that oh authorities God. think it might be a local. Mexicans oh. or drifters or truckers. Emma it says it in the article plain as day. Wingap kills its children. Stop. Wait. You've made me bleed, both of you. If we think about your, the latest sharp objects, uh, with, you have a way of freeing people from the the overwhelming responsibility of what does my body looks like? Yeah. Is my yeah. body okay? Yeah. And with a character like Amy, where you yeah. see how she hurts herself, yeah. you realize that the body is like a map of yourself or something like that. So I wanted to ask you a bit about your relationship to the female body yeah. and to freeing people from yeah. this um, pressure. Yeah. Well, it's complicated. I mean, Sharp Objects, Diet Land, and yeah. the movie To the Bone exactly. um, are all dealing with this relationship, which can sometimes be so um, so adversarial. Like our body becomes our enemy. Yeah. You know, we want to change it or or mark it or or hurt ourselves. And um, I think I'm st I'm still exploring. You know, especially as you know, I get older I and the messages are happens. well. Now you're invisible, or now yeah. you don't count. Um, I think I'm I'm still trying to untangle what it means. I know that I aspire mm -hmm. to be um, kinder to myself and to encourage other people to be kinder and yeah. to love themselves the way they are. But I think it's a struggle, you know, for everybody, but women more than men. In Sharp Object also, you've managed to show like a kind of a three generations of feminism. Yeah. Like raw feminism, yeah. middle ground, and yeah. very confused feminism yeah. depending on your age. Yeah. Is it something that matters to you to show that there is not one feminism, but every woman is one kind of something like that? Well, I think for me, like, All three, I don't think Adora, Camille, or Ama would say that they were feminists. Yeah. I think what you see is more three different generations in their relationship to anger. Yeah. You know, you have this older generation in Adora who denies it at all. Yes. It doesn't exist, and the, the goal is to look perfect, right? And mm -hmm. to create an illusion. Um, and then all your anger goes out a different place. This funeral. It's gonna be very hard. I love those girls. How did you know those girls again? Camille, I'm very involved in the community. It's our family's duty. And for Camille, she takes it and she hurts herself. Yeah. And then she, ha you know, she she doesn't show it to the world either. But she, instead of hurting somebody else or, or or directing it in a different way, she takes it to herself. 
And then I think um, Ama, you know, she's just of this generation that externalizes everything, that yes. makes almost like a, it's almost like sh a show, you know? So she almost splits into two different people. She's her home person who's repressed and mommy's little girl. Yeah. And then she's this person on the outside who's out of control. Um, so I, I, you know, I thought more about it as women, these three women in their relationship to their, their dark places, yeah. you know? What, what are you, what are you wearing? I was uh, just playing dress-ups with Kelsey and Jones. You were not to be outside this house after curfew. Never. I was safe. That is not for you to decide. Well, you let Camille do it. Excuse me? You think bad things didn't happen to little girls when she was my age? I know they did. And you let Camille... And look what happened to her. You need to understand your sister does not see herself in a good light. It's caused her difficulty. You need to be careful with Camille. She is what not difficulty? someone to be admired. What difficulty? No. Look at me. Look at me. You are not safe around her. I read that working with Jean-Marc Vallée uh, inspired you to direct and in yeah. the way you use the, the images yeah. uh, after many, many years using words to tell yeah. a story. So I wanted to yeah. know how it had worked for you on the set and well, how you felt. You know, I, I had already started directing, but the way he works is very free, yeah. you know, and um, it's very um, spontaneous. And he has usually more than one camera going and um, it, it sort of really captures the performances and then shoots a lot, a lot, and then sort of finds it in the editing. Yeah. Again, you know, finds the performances and the, and there was something very liberating because I'm, I'm generally a pretty, um, I like to plan, I like to make lists, and there was something um, very natural about his, his way of working that I thought was really beautiful and free, you know, yeah. yeah. I just wish you could be happy with what God gave you. You have grandma's body. Grandma's fat. I think, you know, like in Dietland, seeing a character who um, is fat, living uh, and being the, the star of her story, um, absolutely moves the, the culture a little bit yeah. further. You just get used to different body types. When you don't see them, they're, uh, they're other, they're different. But when you see them on a regular basis, you start to realize they're all kinds of people. It's any kind of representation, no matter what it is, is incredibly positive. It's yeah. always good, <laughs> you know, and, it's, and it makes you aware of how limited it can be. Would you hand me that lovely? You've worked on Buffy. You have worked on everything. <laughs> Buffy, Mad Men, Grey's Anatomy, Unreal, Dietland. What is the, you, would you say, the most important experience of your career as a writer? Uh, maybe a defining moment or something mm. like that? Wow, that's interesting. I mean, I think the times when I have had to stop you know, there have been one or two times in my career when I had to stop and think, you know, why am I doing this? Yeah. And rather than doing it for some kind of outside success or, you know, sense of achievement, I had to go back to this idea of wanting to connect with people. Yes. And so I think that when I left network television and started working with Matt Weiner, yeah. that was very defining. You know, I think I started with Buffy in a very free place, and then I started getting more and more like boxed in. Yes. And then when I decided that I had to, you know, learn how to write again, um, I feel like going to Mad Men and watching somebody who was so, um, you know, breaking a lot of rules of, of old-fashioned television. Yeah. At that time, you know, TV was fast. You know, everything was like bing, 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 bing. Mm. And he would have scenes that were just, you know, in silence and, you know, would take their, their time. And it was um, very freeing. It was great for me. How do you work with your co-writers or people you work with? I feel like um, my job is to bring out the best 
you know, in the same way that Joss or Shonda or you know um, Matt or these other, they bring out the best yeah. in you. They they you know they demand the best, but they also um, let you do your work and be good at things you're good at. Um, I always hope to encourage people to do their best. You know, mm. so and sometimes it's teaching and sometimes it's just getting out of their way. You know, oh. sometimes it's just letting them do what they're good at, you know. And see how, where it brings you. Yeah, but I also definitely feel responsible for creating a, a, a creative environment, not a, um, you know, some shows can get really tense and yes. com competitive and can feel, um, you feel like there's not room for everybody to be good at their jobs mm -hmm. in a way, and I, I try to never come from that, you know, to always create a, an environment where people can make mistakes yes. and you can learn and not be perfect, you know. We all understand that your intent was to do good. It was. It, Barbara. You oh. need to listen to what is being said without Look, attacking. I was a baseball player before my surgery. I got press attention. Love from strangers feels so good when you're so used to feeling ashamed. That's what you think this is about? The, I, I'm getting high on my own supply? Come on, I've done one interview. I wrote one blog. Yeah, and look what it did. And how many comments have you read? It's a dopamine thing. <laughs> Plus, you made us feel unsafe. Unsafe? Uh, everyone, let's take the temperature down. No, Verena, no. This is what you wanted. You wanted me to feel my anger, find my voice. I did it, and now you're punishing me. OK. Do you have the feeling that fiction, and especially TV, has such a great role in our lives that it might, could help change the world? I feel like what happens is there's sort of a movement in film, and people start to take a message, and they start, you know, one person will start, and then the next person takes a little further, and the next yeah. person takes a little further. And I feel like we just take these baby steps forward, yeah. but that art and culture has a huge role in that, exactly, moving yeah. it. So sometimes, and, and sometimes a film, like, um, I remember for a while, um, Wings of Desire, you mm. know, I, I would watch it over and over and over again. Like a movie really speaks to you and I feel like personally it can change yes. you. Um, but then um, I think in terms of like social change, it's sort of incremental. You go a little bit forward, and but I do think it makes a difference. I know it might be a bit overwhelming, but you can't ignore uh, the impact that your characters could have on viewers. Yeah. Uh, and I was wondering what characters had this kind of impact on you? I mean, it's funny, what just came to mind was Thelma and Louise. Oh, yeah. You know, I remember watching that movie mm. and, and not being able to leave my seat for a while yeah. after I was so, I mean, you know, that was a, um, Ultimately, it was a little bit pessimistic. Like you couldn't be free and survive and yeah. live. Um, but I think that the strength of using a genre type story, a road trip movie, yes. a, an adventure, and then putting so much social um, commentary in it really moved me. Um, Which is what we find in your writing, genre and social right, right, things. Right, right, to see the combination of something that was so entertaining and then really packed a wall up. Yeah. Um, I think that really influenced me. I wanted to be more like that. <laughs> <laughs> Get a life. Thank you so, so much. Uh, thank, you. thank you very much. It was lovely talking to you. Thank you, everybody. Please don't steal the mic. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, hmm, I've got it in my, I've got it. Story Series, c'est terminé. La semaine prochaine, on fera nos adieux à la comédie la plus drôle du petit écran, VIP, puisque la satire politique menée par Julia Louis-Dreyfus tire sa révérence après cette saison. I'm not sure about this part where I say I want to be president for all Americans. I mean, do I, you know? All of them. How about real Americans? Oh yeah, that's good. And okay. then we can figure out what I mean later. Allez, à la semaine prochaine.